Stock markets in the Western world have enjoyed their greatest first quarter in many years and one of their greatest first quarters of all time. But will that run continue or is it about to end? Well, we're about to find out. So hi there everyone. Welcome to the Traders Circle Weekly Market Update. Today is Tuesday the 2nd of April 2024 and before I get started, you do need to be aware that whatever I say is general advice only. It does not consider your personal financial circumstances and you have to decide whether it's appropriate for you. So I just want to touch on central banks. I know I've been rabbiting on about it for 18 months and that's going to continue for the foreseeable future. Uh, because they are a big determining factor in you know how hard the markets have rallied, the fact that they turned around at the end of October last year, and um, you know the the optimism that's keeping markets going as well. Um, so obviously everyone's expecting rate cuts this year. Those rate cuts have been pushed further and further out, uh, and there was perhaps a little bit of uh, uh, more optimism in March when basically we saw the Fed meeting. And they basically indicated that they still believe in three rate cuts this year, or at least half the members of the, the Federal Reserve uh, Open Markets Committee um, does believe in, uh, in three rate cuts this year. Uh, and we saw comments from Jerome Powell that you know, everything's heading in the right direction. Um, the Fed's close to becoming confident enough to cut rates and so on and so forth. Similarly, in Australia, we also had some fairly positive central bank news in March, uh, and that came with a change of the wording for the RBA's March statement, where they removed the tightening bias and it became a more neutral statement. And then we also saw some slightly less inflationary Australian data in March, while US data continued to come in fairly, uh, fairly inflationary. Uh, but in fact, things changed a little bit over the weekend, where we did see um, Jerome Powell basically come out and say that, you know, inflation's still too high, economic growth is still too strong, uh, economic fundamentals are still looking somewhat inflationary. And so US markets did pull back a bit on Monday night in response to that. So a little bit of a mixed bag. The data for the first few months of the year from the US has been inflationary. The Fed has remained fairly sort of uh, fairly dovish uh, in their statements and that's allowed the market to keep going but things have shifted a little bit across the past week. Things for our market have probably looked a little more dovish. Uh, our data's looked a little less inflationary whereas in the US I would say that across the past week central bankers have been a little more hawkish in the US and their data has you know basically uh, remained fairly sort of fairly inflationary although we did see the PCE come in very very slightly lower than expected on Friday. So it continues to be a central bank narrative uh, that cont it continues to be what drives markets or at least, you know, what is causing markets to sort of uh, remain optimistic at the very least. Um, you know, like I said, this move started in October last year. It started with the Fed, quote unquote, pivoting. Um, and, you know, it'll probably end with a change in, in sentiment around the Fed as well. Um, the key things to watch now are probability of a June rate cut from the Federal Reserve. Uh, if you know those get pushed out to the you know later in the year, if we see the market price in less than three rate cuts, that could be a deciding factor in when this current upwards movement ends. All right, the other thing I wanted to touch on were commodities. It's been a pretty good sort of period for commodities, and when I say commodities, I mean oil prices, uh, I mean the gold price, which has gone to all-time highs. Uh, copper has rebounded a lot across the past month and a half. Um, like I said, oil, oil's up sort of 15% for the year. And that's helping sort of uh, commodities producers. It's helping um, a lot of energy stocks come off their lows, helping a lot of miners come off their lows. It's helping improve sentiment around mining stocks. And it has in fact helped our iron ore miners jump across the past week. In fact, uh, we'll see in a moment that um, BHP, for example, is around 8% off their lows from uh, I think uh, just under a month ago. So they're, they've rallied 8% in roughly the last three weeks uh, based on optimism around the commodity space. And while it is true that a lot of commodities have bounced, particularly you know copper, um, gold, oil, things like that, the most important commodity for these iron ore miners really hasn't, and that is iron ore. Iron ore is actually still really weak. And you wouldn't know that by looking at some of these share prices, but it, in fact, it hit the yearly low on Monday. Uh, and that was following another yearly low on the Friday before that. Um, so the last sort of two sessions, 
uh, until a bit of a bounce on Monday afternoon have been the yearly lows for iron ore. Um, we ha if we have a look at a chart here, that'll show this. So this is the daily chart for iron ore futures in, um, at the Dalian Commodities Exchange in China. And we can basically see here on the right hand side of this graph, uh, two consecutive yearly lows on uh, Friday and on Monday. Now I do want to point out that in China, green bars mean fall days, or green bars are where the, the price falls, red bars are where the price rises. So it did hit a, a fresh low on Monday, but it then bounced uh, down a little bit in today's session. Um, but overall, you know, iron ore still sending lower peaks and troughs, still reaching new lows, um, and still seemingly selling off further. So I do just want to caution that, you know, even though we've seen commodities bounce, and even though these iron ore miners have bounced a bit as well, their most important commodity is still sort of looking fairly weak. And if it does keep drifting lower, I would imagine that they will soon turn around. So let's have a look at the chart for this week. Um, this is BHP. And like I mentioned, you know, it bottomed out roughly two to three weeks ago now. And since that bottoming, it's actually jumped about 8% in share price, uh, including a 2% rise today. And like I said, that comes after a series of consecutive lows in iron ore. So I do think it looks a bit strange has been a little bit of a drift lower in the in the Australian dollar, but it's pretty negligible. So I do think this move looks a bit at odds with uh, with what iron ore has done in uh, in terms of the iron ore price. Having a look at our own market now, uh, you know we set our own uh, fresh all time high on Friday, and to be honest, for our market to keep setting all time highs, we do need to see some pretty sort of strange things like BHP and the miners rising with falling iron ore prices. Uh, we need to see the banks going to ridiculous valuations. Um, you know, we need our market, we need to see uh, increasing suspensions of disbelief uh, for these all time highs to be recorded, but recorded they are. And the momentum is remaining to the upside. So we did break through the previous all time high. Uh, we drifted a little bit lower today, but you know, the momentum remains higher. And until we see probably a turnaround in, uh, in the US market um, and a bit of profit taking there, our market seems to see uh, additional buying as well. So like I said, um, you know, we tried to go a bit higher today. We took a bit of a breather, uh, but overall maintaining the upwards momentum. Uh, the key level to watch now is the previous all time high. I put that at roughly 78.35, 78.40. If we hold that as support, that might be an indication that we're going to bounce further. If we break below that, I suspect we'll see a move back towards about 77.50, uh, which is this level here then maybe 7,700 if that breaks. From a more longer term perspective, the level to watch for our market is 7,600. If we dip below that, that'll be a change in the momentum. That was the previous trough. And for this upwards momentum to change, we'll need to see either you know a lower trough or a lower peak. Uh, so keep that in mind. But um, yeah, on the first move to the downside, if it does break 7,600, that'll be a sign of further selling. For the US market, obviously the upwards momentum is being maintained there as well, but they really haven't been able to break above that roughly 52.50, 52.60 resistance level that was set immediately after the Federal Reserve meeting for March. Uh, we'd need to see that level break for further gains to look likely. If they do break above it, impossible to say where they'll, where they'll head. Like I said, these are all time high levels for their market as well as for our market. Uh, the level to watch to the downside is this trend line. And if that breaks, I think they'll very quickly return to the previous all time high at roughly 5180, which they will test as a support level. If 5180 breaks, then we're starting to look at previous resistance levels, probably the next one being around 5050 index points. Uh, so yeah, I will wrap it up there for this week, guys. Um, you know, our market setting fresh all time highs, but requiring some pretty odd individual share price movements to do so. Uh, continued strength in US markets um, being driven uh, at least over the past sort of month or so by a more dovish Federal Reserve, but perhaps a little bit more hawkish statements over the weekend. And uh, yeah, markets grinding a little bit further higher, but perhaps the pace of gains starting to slow a bit, particularly in the US markets. So that's it for this week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, let us know. If you didn't, keep it to yourself and we'll see you in the next one.